This video s tries to solve a pretty common problem. So you have a database that you want to design and you'd like to test it by creating some test data or dummy data to fill in the database and actually run your SQL queries, make sure everything's working okay. So let's start with this scenario. For this video, I'm using a sample pretty typical order database. So here you have the ERD and just to go over some features, here's the customer table. It's a pretty standard uh, customer with ID, first name, last name, and some optional fields. Then you have uh, a vendor in this case uh, which provides products and the customers, uh, you record sales to the customers, and the sales are for certain products in here. So just a few features to note. So the customer table, the vendor table are pretty standard. They have primary keys called ID, uh, required names, and then some other required fields. But then when you start looking at some more detail, we can first look at uh, sale. And here, you see the sale has a foreign key that links to customer. Uh, with a lot of test generators, foreign keys are really tricky because they, especially the free ones, will generate only one table at a time, and linking foreign keys between tables can be problematic. So that's one of the things I'm, I'm going to show you how to resolve here. Then when you look at the product table, it has a couple of interesting things. The primary key here is not a simple numeric ID, it's a code. And so using test data, especially the free ones, how do you do that? Another interesting thing there is that the vendor ID foreign key here can be null. And so we'll look at how to handle um, foreign keys which are optionally null. And the trickiest one here is the bridge tables that records uh, one sale uh, can have multiple products, one product can appear in multiple sales. And it has some features here. The primary key, uh, one of them is a foreign key from sale ID, uh, which is kind of standard. But the tricky item that you have here is you have um, the line number as another part of the foreign key, which is sequential. And then you have uh, a foreign key from product, which is product code, which in this case is not part of the primary key. It could be made part of it, but for demonstration purposes, it's not. Units is the number of units sold, number of the product units in that particular sold, in that particular uh, sale. And each record here, this is um, sometimes called, sale is sometimes called invoice in ERD, since sale product is sometimes called line. So this represents, sale product represents one line of the sale or of the order or of the invoice. And you might want to calculate a line total. Here's a calculated field, which is units times the price taken from another table. So these are a few tricky things in generating test data. And uh, this video is going to show you how to handle all of these. Uh, using uh, a spreadsheet program like Excel. Now I've already gone ahead and created the DDL uh, for this. That's basically the table structure. So the main things here, here's a customer table, here's how it's defined, uh, the vendor table, sale, product, and then the sale product. Uh, so, so this is a code for that. So I'll make that all available um, in, in the links below. Now I know that I use Oracle as a database for this demonstration, but the principles could be easily applied to any other database program. Okay. So now uh, let's search for test data generator. So we can go to any search engine. I use Google like most people. And so here is, we can just test test data generator. So looking for programs that randomly generate 
uh, data for a database. Uh, there's a number of them here, and uh, I'll point your attention to a few links. This link here, test data generator. Um, okay, it's loading up there. Okay, so test data generator here actually has a, uh, a lot of links to many different uh, possible sites, so you can try them out, find out whichever one you like. Um, the free one that I personally like best is the second one that comes up here, Generate Data. And this is what I'm going to use for this demonstration. Uh, now, I'm going to point out here that what I'm showing is how to use a free uh, data generator. There are some paid ones and I've not tried out a lot of them to review. So one that I'm going to point out is a link here, MySQL Data Generator, which if you click, you'll find here. Now, it's not free. It costs about uh, $15 or so, uh, but it looks interesting and it seems that it has all the features that I'm demonstrating here. Uh, so about $14, $15. But uh, this video shows you how to do things for free, and so you, uh, you, you can try whatever works best for you. Okay, so using generatedata.com, uh, the first table uh, we're going to work on, so coming back to our ERD here, uh, is we'll do the customer. And each data generator works a little bit differently, but the concepts are going to be pretty similar, more or less. So uh, for this particular one, if you, it gives the option of a paid account if you make a donation. Uh, and if you make donation of at least $20, you can have an account, uh, $20 per year. Uh, you can actually generate as many rows as you want, have some more features, but we're just using the free features. So even though I type customer here, it's not actually saved because with the free version, you can't actually save anything, so that's not quite necessary. Now, country-specific data, I'm in Canada, so I'll type Canada. It actually makes a difference with uh, some of the uh, names and addresses that might be generated, so it is important to type the country uh, for which you want data first. So uh, looking at Looking at the URL, so first you have uh, ID, first name, last name, phone address, city, and province. So we're going to create those. So I'll go ahead and first just type in the attribute names, and then we'll customize their features for whatever we actually want. So here we have more than four columns, uh, so we can with this option, can add some more, uh, well, it's, it's rows in this data set, but it's columns in your final table. So you add three here. And when you click, you have three more spaces. So use that for address. The tips are showing because I've been through this before. When you did first time, you're probably not going to get those. Okay, so these are the columns that correspond to the ERD. So for the kind of data you want, now ID is an auto incre increment. So here we go, with the auto increment. So you can, it's a good idea to go through these different types, have an idea what's there. But it's an auto increment, so by default is just one, two, three, four, five, six. Though it gives you some options to vary things around a little bit. Start at one, increment by one, the defaults are fine. Uh, for each of these options, once you select a data type, there's a help button where you can look into more detail and it actually explains uh, what a lot of them mean. It explains a lot of the options, so you might want to use that. So ITE is auto increment. Uh, first name, select data type. Human data, we want a name, so names. But in this case, names can be uh, random, but if you actually want regional names that correspond to the country you chose, then you pick names regional, which is what I'll choose here. Then first name, please select, then gives examples. Um, here you can pick specific gender or any gender. So here, pick names of any gender. So it will go back and forth between male and female names. And so this is just the first name. So here's, 
And this is the code that the site uses to specify what you just asked for here. So last name is also a regional name. But this time we pick, so the example here is Smith, surname. So that's what we want uh, for the last name. Then phone. So here, let me go down. Let me skip to there. Oh, there it is. Phone, regional. So regional will recognize this is Canada and it will use uh, Canadian postal codes. Okay, so their phone. And so it will give something in this format there. Okay, address. There are names. Okay, street address. So that's what we want here. Street address, no examples uh, provided. Uh, then city. Have their city. And again, this is going to recognize as Canadian uh, cities. Province, set data type. So for that, you want a region. And here, uh, Canadian provinces. Here, um, you can look at the options, see what it means, but uh, in my case, just want uh, the short two letter province codes. And that's pretty much, uh, those are the options for what I want here. And then if you scroll down, there's many different output formats. Uh, since we're doing database test data, you might think you want to go to SQL, and it's nice, it actually customizes code for various different databases. But as I said here, this site does not handle foreign keys on its own, so we're going to be doing a lot of work in Excel. So everything is going to be exported to Excel. So click on Excel here, and then I generate. Once you do that, there's a pop-up that asks you to open up and so I click and there you go. So it opens up uh, the data they just generated. Um, sorry, one thing to mention here, by default it generates 100 rows. You cannot change it without donating, so you get 100 rows, uh, whether you want more or less, uh, that's it. Okay, so then here's the data that's generated. Then I enable editing so I can make some changes there. Um, just one thing to note, right here you have some codes which are French characters in which are not handled very well in this particular ex export, but I'll leave it because it doesn't make a difference in this case here. Now I'm going to be working, moving all my data to another sheet. And so I'm, I'm in order to handle that, anytime I create a new sheet here, instead of keeping the name, the read-only, and everything that is created by default, I right-click on the Sheet tab. Okay, it's not quite visible here. Uh, let me move this up a little bit so that you can see what's going on here. I right-click on the Sheet tab. I click Move or Copy. And it gets Move or Copy. I just select to book. I want a new book I'm going to be working with. And I don't want to copy. I want to move there. OK. Uh, let's say that didn't quite work. Um, OK, I can start with this one by just saving it to anywhere I want. So here I'm going to save it in test data. So I'm going to call it. Um, Okay, I'll call it test database. And I'll save it to the latest Excel version. And there you go. Okay, so here I've got my sheet. So this is the, fr uh, this is the first one here. And I'll just format it a little bit, make sure there's enough space for everything there. Okay. And I rename this tab to the table name I want, which is customer. OK, so this is going to be the customer table. Now, the way to get this into, uh, into SQL is very simple. Um, I always like to format my sheet so that they can scroll nice. So. I'll put right here, I'll go to View tab, and I freeze panes. So then I can scroll up and down and keep the header row. Okay, 
Now I'm going to create in every sheet an insert column where I'm going to actually type the code for uh, the SQL code that I want. So the SQL code, you need to type an equal sign because I'm going to type a formula and quote. The code is insert. I'll type it up here so it's easier to see what's going on. So insert into customer values. So that's the insert uh, syntax in SQL. Then, okay, so here's open parenthesis and then I start with a quote. This is a single quote. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask uh, Excel to use this formula to put in ID, F name, L name, and so on in here. So I do that, I close this. So and now ID is in column A, so and A2. So row two. So he's going to copy that. And um, Hopefully you understand Excel formulas. If not, you can just look at the provided sheets uh, I provide in the link below and, and copy it. But this is a basic code that we're going to be using. So I do that for, okay. And let's say. Okay, let's see what we have, and okay. So basically, I'm going to do the same thing over and over again. Let me make sure I'm getting it right here. Okay, uh, not quite. It's hard to see these quotes because they're pretty invisible for the main part. That's why it's best to just look at the sheet. And let's see, I know how I can do it. I'll just copy this over and over again a few times. So what I want is B2, C2, D2, E, F and G. Okay. Let's got that quote. Okay. In any case, I've already, just to make it easier, I've already got it from here. So this is a code that I'm trying to type in. And once you finish typing it in, you can see, you scroll over, that this actually types in the complete insert line from that code. And once you've got one code done, then you can just fill, copy it all the way down, down to the 100th. Remember, we always generate 100 lines by default. And this copies it, and that is your SQL, those are your SQL insert statements, and use the correct syntax for your SQL. So you've got that for the customer table. Okay. Okay, so in this case for customer, we don't need that many customers, so we're going to delete uh, the extra customers we don't need. We can just keep 25, that should be good, and we'll delete the rest. Okay, so now coming back to our ERD, you have the vendor table, and the vendor table is basically the same thing. There's just a few fewer rows, so I'll go ahead and create the vendor table right away. So for that, you, I just create a new tab, and so it starts over again, and you type in the vendor table. Okay, so here's a vendor table. Again, I pick Canada. And the ID row is uh, exactly the same. So this is an auto increment, just numeric from one to however many. Now for company name, it's like data type. Again, it's human data and you pick company. Now for this particular um, site generator, it uses lorem ipsum to 
randomly generate uh, a company name. You can look at help to find out the details of how it's created. Then you have uh, contact name. So you keep them, um, the attributes uh, not split. So here's a human name. And in this case, you want a complete name. Uh, so you want both first name and last name in one field. So that's an option here. Here I'll pick Alex Smith, which means it could be male or female. And the last feature here is phone, which is exactly the same thing as we use for customer. So here you have phone fax regional, and that's fine. Uh, so exactly four fields. Uh, now note, sometimes you might go there and click generate, and then you find some other field, uh, something not, not expected. And if you go to the back button here, you find out what happens is that you left the export type on HTML or something else. Uh, but where, so you just click the back button as I showed you, um, and you click on Excel, and then you generate. Then that will give you your Excel uh, sheets right here. So here I enable editing so that I can now uh, get this sheet. And I click, okay, let me move this so that's more visible. So I click on the worksheet on right tab, now move or copy. And I select the test database, which is what I'm working on. And it shows there's a customer there, I move to the end. I don't want to create a copy. I don't need this read-only field any longer, so I just move it. And there it moves uh, to the test database. You can see customers there, here's worksheet. I rename it to vendor so I can keep track of what I'm doing. Okay, so here I am. And expand my field names. And as always, I freeze pane so I can scroll. Okay, now there's a couple of things for this vendor table. Uh, first, I don't really need 100 vendors uh, so for this test. So I'll just delete the extra ones that I don't need. So if you need less than 100, you can just select, uh, wait, did I get the right one? Uh, actually, no, I want up to 20. So you have to, you can use IDs to know exactly how many you've got here. And I delete the ones I don't want. Now, if you want more than 100, uh, at least with generate data, it only gives you up to 100. So you just have to generate another 100 and another 100. And fortunately, some of the random names might duplicate, but at least you can control the IDs to make sure they don't duplicate uh, that way. Uh, with this demo, I'll just keep to max 100 in any table. So the next thing, we now want to write the insert scripts for vendor. And the easiest way to do it, instead of typing it from scratch, is you go back to customer, and you, you select the first, the insert title and the first row there and you just copy it. You go over to vendor and you paste it over here. So you just paste. And when you paste you're going to get an error. Once you click it you can see why. It's simply because the customer format had a lot more columns included. So all you need to do is you just delete this uh, pound ref which uh, refers to columns that are not being used. And to make convenient, you can click from the, select from the first ampersand with a ref all the way up to the first ampersand with uh, a valid value from A2, and you delete, press enter, and there you go. So it works perfectly that way, and now you have the vendor uh, columns. Uh, don't forget to change the name of the table because now you're inserting into the vendor table. And having done that, you just fill in, copy, and now you have your vendor insert script. So it's as simple as that. Okay, so now the next table we're going to do is the sale table. And this one becomes, now things start getting a bit tricky because here you encounter a foreign key that you want to make sure correspond to what you have with a customer table. So I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so you go back to uh, generate data. 
Okay, so back to generate data.com and now we're going to do sale. Again, I like to type the title here, but it's really not used in this export, so it's totally optional. And here I'll clip Canada just by habit, even though we're not actually going to use it. Now, because generatedata.com cannot handle foreign keys, we will only generate data for the non-foreign keys. So that's going to be the ID and the sale date. We're, we're not going to generate anything for customer ID. So in this case, uh, just have ID and sale date. Okay, note that here we have too many columns. To get rid of them, you just click on the extra columns and the delete uh, row, and then the, you click on the delete button at the bottom, and it gets rid of those rows that you don't need. So ID, you can use an auto increment so as usual. And the sale dates, like data type, you set, you go down, look for the options, and if look for a date. So here's the date. Now with dates, you have to be careful because there's different formats for dates. And if again, if you click on the help, you can find the code for dates. It's not very well explained here, so you might need to play around a little bit. And you can set your date ranges that you want your sample random dates to be drawn from. Uh, so in this case, um, you can uh, start from Okay, start from December 1 to 2014, that's today's date, and it goes automatically up to uh, December to two years from now. So you can do that if you want. If you don't want up to two years, you can uh, move some months back. Maybe I'll say from uh, one year ago to, okay, go up to the end of next month, up to the end of January, okay. So whatever dates you want. Okay, so to select uh, the format you want, okay, I forgot here, the examples, you can go through the examples and look at what format uh, you actually want for your date. Here, I'll like the day, month, and then the four digit year. And there, it has a code that corresponds to that in the help. You could play around with that to get the exact format you want. So that will give you the date. Okay, so that's uh, all we need for here. Click Excel, and Generate. Okay, so here's uh, the sale information. Enable editing, so as before. So I moved that to the test database at the end. So here it is. I renamed that sale. Okay, so now a couple of things to change here. So now we need to add the customer ID field manually into Excel because generate data can't keep track of those. And so we create a new column for that called customer ID. And go ahead and freeze panes. Okay, so what, since this is a foreign key, what we're trying to do is we want to make sure that these customer IDs are values that are taken from the customer table and the ID column. We don't want any value that's not there. Now, so to do that, we need a special Excel function. And a second thing is we want a random number. Uh, we, now you could manually, Take numbers, but then that's a little bit uh, painful. So using randomization is better. So here's an Excel formula that's going to do that for us. Okay, so let, let's go through this a little bit and I'll just quickly show you what uh, it does. Though the link, information in the links below will explain in more detail. So first we have the index function. What the index function does is it takes an array 
or a range of cells. And the range of cells here is the customer ID column. So if you go to customer, this is the range A2 to uh, all the way to the last customer that you have. Okay, so so this here refers to the range of IDs in the customer table. So A1 to A26. And then the next thing is you want a random number. <coughs> and the random number is a number here. We A number between 1, can be 1, up to the count of customers. So, and so up to the number of roles there are in the customer table. So, you, so if you have a different number of customers, you just have to adjust that number to correspond. It'll take a random number and it'll give you a random uh, item from that field. And so th there's wh where it is. And a very important thing in this formula, if you notice each of these uh, cell references, A2 to A26, has a dollar sign in front of it, and that means it's an exact range. So that's an important feature of Excel. So if you copy this code, it will not change corresponding to the row. So with that, we can now just fill this down all the way to the end. And when you copy it, it keeps the formula exactly as it is. If you did not have the dollar signs, then the formula would change for each row, which is not what we want in this case. Okay, and so that gives us a random number from the customer table and uh, for each row. But it's a valid number. All the numbers are uh, valid customer IDs, which makes a valid foreign key. Now, we're going to use a lot of random uh, Excel functions in this uh, demonstration. And you need to note that any time you change the spreadsheet, the random numbers will change also. So like if I add a new value here, see all the random numbers change. A new value there, all the random numbers change. So that's a feature of randomization. So there's no guarantee what those numbers are. They're just random numbers. The only guarantee that they are valid. So next thing, uh, as we've done before, we copy the insert script over to sale. It'll be invalid. So you just copy, just delete the extra lines that you don't need. You change the name to sale, because that's the name of the table. So now that's valid. And now you copy it over. And you notice, even though it's using random functions there, it generates a valid value that corresponds to whatever it has at this time. So that's the sale table. OK, so next we come to the product table. Now the product table uh, has its own interesting things. It has a foreign key. But the foreign key there is interesting because it has some null value, so we need to, there's some special code that will handle that. And it has a, the primary key is a code. It's an alphanumeric code, not just numbers. And so I'll show you how you can generate, uh, one way you could generate that so using Excel. OK, so now we're going to create a new product. Product. And then Canada. Okay, so we can do auto increment IDs. Now, even though we're doing product code, the auto increment IDs are still useful, and we'll use. Uh, I'll show you how to use that to create uh, alphanumeric codes in Excel. But for now, we we'll just use IDs here. Now, the description, select data type. We're going to use the random words. So here's a random number of words. And you can choose or to generate between one to five words. <coughs> so just creating random product names that will have no meaning, but at least will be data that can be used. So quantity of quantity on hands, 
we want a number range. So that's in the numeric number range. So let's say between 1 to 50 items in stock is good. Okay, so that's what we're going to have there. And price here, there's a currency option. And so we can go ahead and pick that currency. It gives us nice defaults. And we'll say, okay, we'll take a number from, okay, let's say from 0 to 100 as a default. Uh, however, you know, specifically, uh, now we can change these defaults from here. So for example, it's best to remove the currency symbol. So just delete currency symbol there because um, that causes unnecessary interference. And then the range, you can say, okay, we don't have a price less than $1. So from $1 to $100, and so that will work. <coughs> now note the foreign key again. We're not creating that, because we'll create that uh, completely in Excel. Okay. So I click on Excel, Generate. So we open that up. <coughs> Oops. Hopping around there. And we copy that into our test database, move it to the end. And this is our product. Okay. Now in this case, let's stay with just 50 products. Okay, so we can go, we just delete the rest. 50 products is good enough for our test purposes. And we'll stay with that. Okay. Now let's create columns for the field we actually need. We're going to keep this ID column, uh, but then we're not going to use it as uh, our actual primary key. So we're going to use the code, which is what we have from our ERD, and we need to create vendor ID. So here is our description. We create the vendor ID. And okay, so now we have those columns. I can free the panes. And so these are the columns we need. Now for the code, because this is Excel, you can use any formula you want. And so I'll just use a very simple one. I'll take uh, just the first letter of the description. So that's goes left of, okay, so that would be, okay, so left of, Say two, so the first from there, and I'll concatenate the ID there, and so that just creates V one, and that just is a very simple one that gives an alphanumeric code that you can play with. Okay, so that's good enough for working purposes. And I'm going to italicize the ID column to just indicate that we're not actually going to use in the database, even though we have that there. Uh, and one advantage of using the ID in the code is that when you're trying to keep track, make sure your test data is okay, you know that the number actually means something, and you can easily find uh, what row you're referring to. Then the vendor ID. Okay, the basic idea of vendor ID is the same, uh, it's a foreign key, so it will work very similar to uh, the customer ID. But there's one slight difference, and that is that we want to include null values. So the way that I implement null values is, so with the code that I have for foreign IDs, it will go to, so the sale foreign ID will go to all the customer IDs and randomly take one. So here I'm going to create a new row, the last row in the, the vendor table, and make it a null. And a null is just a blank value. And to do that in Excel, you just add a single quote. So the ID here is a single quote, 
and that is understood in Excel as a blank value. So it's a text value with no content, so a special meaning. And here I'll just go ahead and write null as a company name and italicize it show it's not actually a database value, just show that this actually has some meaning. And now with that, we can use uh, a similar code in sale we have the foreign key. So we use a very similar code, not exactly the same, because now we want to inc randomly include null values. So uh, the code that I have for that looks like this here. So it's uh, it includes all vendor rows, including the null row. And it randomly takes a number from 1 to the count of vendors plus 1 to in include the, the null of the value. And so that will randomly give you a, a value. And when you fill that in, in all the product rows, you can see that occasionally it randomly gives you null. So that's is an represents a nullable field so that you know that that is uh, enabled. And again, whenever you change values, it will randomly create something and randomly one or more might be null. Okay. Now insert is the same as we've always done. You just copy two lines from customer and once you do that, then you edit it. Okay, change that to product. You delete any extra rows, uh, any extra column references that you're not actually using. Oh, but actually in this case, note that we're not using A1 because we're not using the ID column. So in this case, you actually have to delete the A reference so that you, you're only going from B to the end. <coughs> and there you have the insert code, and you copy that to all the other rows you need. Okay, so that's how we handle the product table. And now I've saved the last for the best. The sale product has all kinds of complications going for it. Uh, the, pr the first field in the primary key is a foreign key. The second field is an, the line number is increment from one to the number of lines uh, that that particular sale has. The next one is a foreign key. Units is straightforward, just a random number of how many, the number of units of the product that was ordered in that particular sale. And the line total is a calculated field. So with the random generator that we have, you can only randomly generate things that don't have funny rules going on. So the, uh, the only thing we're going to randomly generate is units. All the others we will have to calculate. So going back to the generate data. So now we are doing sale products. So and with sale products, even though it's not going to be needed here, so go for Canada just out of habit. And the only column that has nothing special is the units. And this is the number of units of a product that are ordered in particular sale. And so here it's just a number range. So we can say that, let's just say you can, uh, at least for the test database, you can have from 1 to 10 possible units in a particular sale. The other rows are not needed because everything has special functions. We delete them. So Excel generate. And here we move that to the end. And so all you have here is units. And we name that sale product. Okay. So now, again, here's what the table looks like. And so we're going to uh, add all the other rows that we need. OK. 
Okay. So we have three rows before here, which are you know, the sale ID, line number, and the product code. Then the units, and then we have the line total. Okay. And in this case, uh, we can keep all 100 rows. That's fine. Now, uh, this table, because it has so many rules, has a lot of complications, uh, in fact. And so the way that I handle this is I'm going to go ahead and actually create, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create some helper columns to handle the code. And it's not so easy to explain what these do. Uh, so I'm just going to, uh, I'll copy them over right now. And I will, the notes will explain in more detail, in more detail what each one does. And so here are the helper columns that I'm uh, creating. And to do that, I actually have to make a few changes. I need to, OK, I have to make a few changes. I need to move everything here to a lower row so that it will make, uh, be able to work uh, properly. So I, I can explain just very briefly uh, what's going on here. Uh, this is a random column that is used to randomly sort the sale IDs. Uh, these sale IDs are the sale IDs foreign keys. Now what happens here is that because this is a multiple foreign keys, the values of sale IDs are not going to be just random or unique sale IDs. For example, if uh, sale ID number 15 this case has six lines, then sale ID number 15 needs to appear six times in here. And sale ID 7, if it has two lines, it needs to appear two times here. So this column says the number of lines that we're going to give each sale ID. And this is a running total that's used to power the logic. The sale IDs here are copied directly from the sale IDs in the sales table. So you just copy and paste. Uh, and the random column is used uh, by sorting them. You actually randomize the numbers there. Uh, I can show you just simply how you do that. So by sorting, you sort by column L, which is the randomization column. Just by sorting it, then it gives a random number of uh, which sale IDs will be used first, because not all these will be used, only the ones on top will actually be used. And so if you want to randomize that, you just run the sorts uh, a few times, and that will give you a, a random order. Okay, so for the sale IDs here, there are special codes that will be needed for each of these. Okay, so I'm going to copy those codes uh, right away here. So now we just fill the line down to the bottom. Okay, and there you go. <coughs> so now these tables uh, are all, uh, the table is complete. And just to basically explain what it does, here the sale ID goes to the helper table and looks like here are some random sale IDs. So here's 65 and says it has two rows. That's the number of lines. And so it creates two rows there. And line number will number them sequentially from one to two. Then sale ID two has three rows. So that's sale ID with three rows. Then 
sale ID 37 with six rows, and there's 37 with six rows, and that's what these scripts do. It, on the sale ID column, it will show the correct number of lines. The line number, it will number them sequentially from one to the number of lines. Then the product code will take a random product code, and this code just makes sure that it looks at the number of product codes in the product uh, code table, and it randomly takes a number, but it makes sure that for the same sale ID, there are no duplicate product codes. So line 65 has one and two. Make sure there's two different product codes. Uh, even a line like 81 with 10 different product codes, this code makes sure that there are, uh, that all 10 are different. There's no repetition there within the same um, product code. Just freeze paints here. Uh, units is random from the generate data script. Then line total, again, is a calculated field, and it's basically uh, number of units times the price. To get the price, it looks up the product code, which was randomly generated here, and then it goes to the product table, matches that product code uh, from the product code's uh, column, pulls the price for the corresponding product code, brings it back here, multiplies it with lines unit, and gives the correct line total. And that means that uh, the line totals here are not just random numbers, they actually do correspond to the numbers currently in the database. And even, uh, and e even though the number, the line, the sale IDs are random, the number of lines are random, so if you change any fields, uh, it will change the number of lines, but the scripts will maintain all of this information internally consistent. So again, uh, the links below the video will explain in more detail what these codes mean, but that's the general idea of what they're trying to do here. Okay, so now that we've uh, succeeded in creating all the sample data, let's load it into the database. And again, I'm using Oracle here. So I load up Oracle uh, using Oracle SQL Developer, and I open up a session. So here I have a blank connection uh, with no uh, tables in there. And first, you have to insert your DDL, which has already been uh, correctly created. So I just copy all of this. And I'll hide the drop statement, the table statements for now, since there's no tables to drop. And I run the script. And after running it, you can see the tables have now been created. And when I click on them, look at the data, they're all empty. So they're all placeholders uh, ready to hold the data. So going back to this uh, script here. So now uh, the order in which you uh, actually load scripts is uh, very uh, particular. You have to go in the order. You have to load all the tables on the one sides first. So we can create customer, vendor, then sale, then product, and sale product last. And then you won't have any errors that way. If you create in a reverse order, then you're going to have foreign key uh, conflict errors. So first you go to customer, and you simply select all the insert statements. You copy them. Okay, so I replace it here, put it in here, and I run that script, and it inserts all the tables. Now when I click on customer, you can see all the data has been entered uh, correctly. Okay and delete that. The next, next vendor. Again, select the insert scripts. Everything inserted correctly, no problems. The next we'll do sale.
Now, when you're doing this, there are a couple of possible errors you might run into. Uh, just to highlight one of them is you might have date problems. So you might have errors uh, inserting dates. And that's why in the beginning of this script, I had an alter session statement to just set the date format in Oracle. Other databases might have equivalent things. So just make sure that the date format you set the database to receive matches the date format that you're actually entering. Otherwise, you'll have uh, errors there. Um, okay, so that we did sale. So next, we have product. Now, another possible error that you might run into is you might have some fields that complain that the file size uh, or the field size doesn't match, or you're trying to enter a row and the fields are too long. If you have an error like that, uh, because you generated using one site that might have different rules from the field size you originally created. So you might have to start over again, but just increase the size of your fields to make sure they match whatever was generated on the other site. Okay, so then last we create uh, select, uh, we create uh, sale product. Okay, so we co co copied that data. Run it and okay, good. So everything inserted, no errors. And now we go through our tables and we see that the data is all properly loaded. And even vendor ID, there's null. As I showed you how you can create some sample null vendor IDs, no problem. Um, sale has those. And when you look, all the data, the foreign keys uh, match the constraints and everything corresponds uh, appropriately. So, of course, I use uh, a sample database here, but I use a database that has a number of rich features, foreign keys, uh, calculated fields that go between tables, even particular constraints where you have to make sure the number of lines correspond. So hopefully you'll be able to modify the Excel scripts uh, that I provide. Uh, to match your database so that you can uh, generate uh, the test data that you need.